Now, if you've never seen these, these are actually pretty cool. Right now, everything in the world looks upside down. Now, I can raise these right here and you can see, well, they won't stay, but I can raise these now and you can see how they work. What I look at in here at an angle, angles down and just kind of flips everything over. So this is crazy, because right now, what's right side up is now upside down. As, as you can see, uh, I've got a toilet here, and, and literally, man, in my world and what I'm looking at, and I'm just gonna use my hands based on what I would think, like my Yeti is right here, somewhere, right here. And I'm gonna say the, the top of it's right here, but, but I turn and I look at the toilet, and literally to me, it looks like the top is way up here, and, and I may be right, but Bruh. I'm looking at the toilet with the tank coming down. So, and I know there's a table here that I do not want to run into, uh, and I'm gonna walk around here, maybe. Oh, we move this way back. Uh, I'm gonna walk around here and I can see with my hands in ratio when I get close to things. But what I can tell, I keep look, look, there we go. What I can tell you is this is gonna be fun. All right, let's spin this thing around, show you what I'm looking at, and we'll see what we can come up with. So I'm gonna go ahead and, now I'm looking at this and I, I swear it, it looks like it's going down. Trust me, it's going down. Uh, all right, so what we're gonna try to do today is just a simple toilet rebuild. So what I'm, <laughs> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take apart the handle. I am gonna get somebody to hand me a toolbox so I can get it over here. As you saw, I can rebuild one of these blindfolded. That's not hard to do. I've done it so many times. But when you keep your eyes open, you realize, man, what you're looking at isn't really what's there. It's all upside down. So let me grab some tools and let's get going and let's have fun. Okay. All right, so I've got a couple of my favorite tools here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and set them down right here and I'm gonna pick up this tank lid. And it's funny, you see me keep raising my head, it's because I'm trying to look down and I see that down is this way. So, man, this is confusing. If I'm in a house, I'm down here, I loosen up my nut. Now, I've already turned off the angle stop. I have already got all the water out of it. If I've got all the water out, I really don't have to worry about it. If I still have some in there, make sure that I've got a towel there so that when I pull it up like that, this washer, and I know, I'm reaching in through the back, all this is gonna be done from above, but that washer, once you break the seal on that, any water left in the tank on this side is gonna come out. So, I've got this part off. Step number one. Now, I'm gonna go ahead too and take off the handle. Man, looking at everything upside down is really nuts. If I was out on the job, at this point, I would reach down in here and undo, and yes, I am keeping my eyes open. Now, I can come in here, disconnect my flapper from my handle, and both these parts are out also. So pretty much now, this has become a minor rebuild. So I now have the fill valve pulled out. I have the flapper pulled off the flush valve. I've actually checked the flush valve and it feels nice and smooth. Now, if I needed to change the flush valve, I would actually undo the tank to bowl bolt here, the tank to bowl bolt on the other side, and pull it off. Then I've got the big washer and the big nut down on the bottom to loosen up. Now you're gonna need a big pair of channel locks to do that, but that's where you go from there. Okay, so now I've got everything apart. All I've gotta do now is try to figure out how to put it back together and make it all make sense. I'm telling you though, looking at everything upside down is kinda nuts. What, let's do something just to add a little bit to it. Now, we were gonna have me do this from up here. I mean, think about it. This is right where anybody working on the system will be working on it from. 
And I gotta tell you, getting up here really wasn't that hard, but all I can tell you is I know it's a long way down. Here's what I'm looking at from the top here. You know, I've got a hole in the back over here. This is where my fill valve goes. Right here in the middle, now, this is my flush valve. Now, this is the part that your fill tube goes in, your flapper's connected to, the handle chain connects to the flapper, the knee bone is connected to the elbow bone. You know how it all goes together. You know, looking at it from this point of view, it looks a little different. Okay, I've got all the different pieces here, so literally while I'm up here, I am gonna go ahead and put this together. I don't have to worry about falling off because I'm, I'm not going anywhere. Now, when I rebuild a tank, I like putting my flapper and handle and everything in first. The reason being, the fill valve goes in so easy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my handle and my nut. Now, the thing to remember on a handle when you're replacing it is you wanna slide it in position. You see how it's square right here? You wanna slide it in to your square hole. It goes in the square hole. Get everything positioned like it goes. And you wanna remember that your nut is backwards threads. So instead of turning righty tighty, oh, that's the wrong nut. Right, did any of y'all see the other night? Ah. All right, so first of all, you look forever for your nut. Then you come in and remember, these are left-handed threads. So you're gonna turn it left to tighten it up, not right. And I'm gonna snug it up here and just make sure everything moves like it should. And it does great. Now I can come back and tighten this up if I need to. To be honest, handle, you don't need to get super tight. Water should never make it up this high, so you should never have a problem here. So this is ready to go. So the next thing is I'm gonna find my flapper. I feel it. Luckily for me, the, the, the hook is right where it goes, but I'm gonna unhook it because your hook may not be. Okay, so I've got it unhooked. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach in here. And guys, this is, a pain because I am I am keeping my eyes open the whole time. It would really be easy to just kind of close my eyes and feel it and know where I'm at or what I got going. I'm gonna actually take this back off just because I can't tell where my chain is. So I get it up here. Aha, and it looks like I tied the chain around it. Okay, so it's connected right there. So I've got the end of the chain. So I'm gonna come down. And yes, I'm sorry, I did close my eyes for just a second. I'm gonna get it, and then I wanna fill my chain. All right, so basically, it feels like when it hits, my chain is at the very top. So what I wanna do is I wanna look at it, the one, pull it, and yes, my eyes are open, believe it or not. Go back into where I wanna be, and look at that. I like that. That gives me just a little bit of play before it engages but also whenever I push my handle, it pulls it all the way up and the handle does not come up into the tank lid. So as you can see, man, I got that part done right. So, so far we're doing okay. Now the next one. Now, I might even go a little further. If this is what's running and this is part of your problem, you can possibly just take your top off here. I'm gonna set it down here where I can get it and Disconnect it right here. And then what that's gonna allow you to do is gonna allow you to twist this top and undo it. Now, when you do that, you've got a diaphragm in here. Now, you can possibly take this diaphragm out and clean it. A lot of times, uh-oh. Thanks for the help from the audience. I really do appreciate it. Uh, but sometimes you can just take this apart and clean it and take care of your problem. So let me get to where I can try to put this together again. Oh man, I might not have should have done that. And I am trying to look at it and it's kind of tough. Ooh yeah. Man. 
the square hole. Okay, and I got it accidentally somehow. Now, I know that I want this to turn. This is free, so literally I can come in anywhere right here, put that in, turn it, and lock it, spin this around, and go right back in position right there. So this is good, this is how it works. So you can see everything is fine here. Man, it's on there, I'm gonna call that good. So now that I've got my handle and my flapper in here right where it goes, this is the easy part. Literally, man, you line up in your hole and go right down in there and you wanna make sure that washer's pulled down in to where you're not gonna have a problem. And then the other thing to remember is you don't want this handle to hit, get up in your assembly here. So I like to turn my assembly a little bit towards the back. Almost lost that one too. Now once I've got everything together here, I'm gonna make sure that I get my hose down in my dip tube. Look at the way it sprays. Make sure I'm spraying down into the tube. And believe it or not, this is all good. If you look at the way it goes right here, this is great and everything looks like it's doing good right there. So, then the last one, remember, I've got a wall right here. So I would reach down under here and tighten up my nut on my fill valve and I'm good to go right there. Now, a couple of different things. A lot of these fill valves like this are adjustable. You can take this little sleeve right here and pull it up if you can get to it or if you can feel it. Man, I know I can't see it. But anyway, you can adjust this up a little bit higher if you need to make it as long as your other one was. And then one of the big things that I get a lot is how do you adjust the, the water level? And this little screw right here is what's gonna adjust the level of your float. You want your float, you want your water level to stay a half inch to an inch below this overflow tube right here. So once you fill it with water, once it gets down, or once it gets up to this level about a half inch high, you wanna take this and snug it down. That way you move that flow down. That way you're stopping your water level there. You're not overflowing water. You're not wasting a ton of water. Now guys, I pretty much did this upside down. Now remember, you've still gotta hook your water line back up. You've gotta turn on your angle stop. You've gotta do stuff like that. But I really think that if I can do this upside down, any one of you, can do this the right side up. So what did you think about this? Is this something you think you can do? You got any other crazy ideas for us to do? We'd love to hear from you. Do me a favor and leave me a comment down below. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, helping you make more money in the trades.